Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews with the Corelli Python XB6S, a 6S racing buggy from Corelli or Team Corelli. They're somewhat of a Belgian brand and I'm living in Belgium, so I figured I'd give them a chance and what better vehicle to start out with than this absolute speed demon called the Python. Not to be confused with the Arma Typhon, even though their color scheme is the same, they look kind of the same, they perform kind of the same, they cost kind of the same. This is a completely standalone vehicle. There are some rumors about these being manufactured by Arma. That's not the case. It's not a copy of an Arma. It's definitely Corelli's own design, but it does look an awful lot like the Arma Python. Sorry, Typhon. That was not even on purpose. Um, I would really like it if Team Corelli I was a little bit more creative with their body styling and their naming and marketing around this vehicle to really not get that name of being a slightly cheaper copy of a very popular product. Anyway, the Python itself is stunning. Absolutely gorgeous vehicle. It's very high quality. The plastics are high quality. The metals are high quality. Everything's finished just incredibly well. I'm so happy with how it looks or how it looked before I actually drove it. Obviously, these shots are all made before I actually drove the vehicle, but it just looks stunning. And while Team Corelli has done a lot of things to make it more bash friendly, at heart it still feels like a racing buggy to me. So you do have adjustable preload on your suspension. Of course, damping adjustment has to be done through shock fluids like it is with pretty much every single RC out there. But while, for example, the steering links are fixed in length, you can still have four different adjustments in tow. Same for the rear, you can adjust your camber just by mounting the arm slightly differently, slightly higher, slightly lower to adjust that camber, to adjust that toe in the front. It's all done with screws rather than turnbuckles, which is lighter, more durable, cheaper to replace when you eventually break it. So I can't really fault the design. You can even adjust your caster angle using the little clip you see there right in front of the body. If you put it on the other side of the arm, you get slightly more caster angle, so your vehicle will be a little bit more stable. The only thing I didn't find to be adjustable was the anti-roll arms or anti-roll bars. There's no thicker bars available. There's no longer or shorter links available. Anyway, looking underneath the vehicle, it is again, gorgeous, especially the machining and the finish on the motor mount is just so amazing. It's this nice silver aluminium. It's just mwah, amazing. Uh, the motor, the Curon 825 is massive and it's supposed to run on 4 to 6S and the ESC on the website says 2 to 6S, but then on the ESC it actually says 3 to 6S. So I'm not really sure what's up with that. Um, also the servo, 25 kilogram servo, it's plenty. It's very very powerful, pretty quickly reacts to your inputs as well, but mostly everything's just really high quality. It's a 150 amp ESC in there, lots of tunability because it is a hobby wing ESC at heart. Um, big button um, to turn the vehicle on and off, but when it gets wet, the button stops working. So I hope when I clean my vehicle again after today's riding, I can still turn it on because I had to unplug the battery to turn it off. Uh, but I didn't have any other um, electrical issues with it at all in my rather short but very I wouldn't say well yeah it was just a very heavy bashing session even on a racetrack as well because I'm not very good at driving these because they're too fast for my little brain but yeah pivot ball suspension plastic hubs plastic arms but the important stuff is all metal um, as are of course your wheel nuts something that really bothered me is that this is literally the first time this wheel has been taking off this car and as you can see, the hex on the pillow ball is already rounded from the factory. Um, Team Corelli, please, you don't have to round bolts off from the factory. I'm perfectly capable of doing that myself. So maybe give the factory workers sharper tools or a little bit more time to assemble these because it's not a big deal, but I do want to buy something in perfect shape rather than something that looks like I've already touched it. One small issue I had during testing was I broke a spoke out of the wheel and then while on the racetrack I did lose the front wheels multiple times. Uh, was that due to the sheer amount of weight being picked up from the muddiness of the track and unbalancing and shaking the wheel nuts off? I don't know, but maybe there should be a little retention clip on there as well. Out in the fields behind my house, 
The car felt amazing. It is like a combination between a race buggy and a bashing vehicle. You can basically just put slightly thicker shock fluid in and turn it into a basher, but if you want to race it, it's perfectly fine out of the box. And then you do have those adjustments. And if you want more adjustments, there are these optional tuning parts available on the Corelli website and with their retailers as well. So you can really fine tune it for racing or bashing, depending on what you really want to do with this vehicle. But it's a great overall buggy and it is redonkulously fast. I really struggle turning my head as fast as this vehicle flies by, even when I'm on a, on a stand, on the driver's stand. This thing does 110 kilometers an hour. I actually clocked it at 112 in my testing just down the street here in a 50 kilometer an hour zone. So it is just, it's silly fast and it handles really well. You can roll it. So if you go from a um, slow speed acceleration with full lock on, you will roll the vehicle like you will with pretty much every four wheel drive RC car. Um, I kind of thought it would slide around more because these Ninja profile tires aren't really the, the grippiest, but it doesn't slide a lot really. It, there's a lot of mechanical grip there. Um, there's a little bit of downforce as well, but mostly I find that in this sort of looser sandy conditions, you could only really slide it around if you're really purposely sliding it. Other than that, it was just very grippy. A little bit on the edge of um, understeering, um, whereas my other RCs are all set up for oversteer because I just like a very aggressive turn in and then just use the throttle to control the, the turn. Um, this one's slightly understeery, uh, but again, you can probably take off a little bit of preload on the front to um, dial that out or maybe, I don't know, remove the anti-roll bar or anti-sway bar, depending on how you call that thing. Now, when I took it to the racetrack, um, I actually went to SCT in uh, Ghent. Uh, it's basically a short course track, so a buggy this big and this fast isn't really at home there. Uh, and it was a little bit difficult to control it because it's so muddy and there were puddles basically as deep as the car is tall. Um, but it handled okay, I guess, for what is effectively my first time on a racetrack with a buggy this ridiculously fast. Uh, after a while, I did kind of get the hang of it and I was able to just bash it, but also go pretty damn quick. Um, in my opinion, at least, I'd probably just get lapped by anyone who's actually good at racing these cars. But I had a blast. Um, but this was where I noticed that the front wheels came off. Did I not tighten them enough or is that a design flaw? Or was there just too much weight pickup on the wheels and balancing the whole thing and just shaking the nuts off? I don't know, but it happened and I lost one of these little nuts that holds one of the wheels on. So I ordered some new ones. They're not too expensive, but it kind of sucks that you have to pay the shipping cost on them. I also um, noticed when I came back home that there was a lot more angle on the rear wing than when I um, took it out of the box. It turns out the front uh, suspension mount and that also caused the drive shaft to rub on the spring. And in the rear, it was bent forwards even more. And there was no real rubbage there, but it was bent from very much landing upside down. And obviously with a, a wing this big, if you land upside down, it's like a big anchor trying to hold down a four kilogram car traveling at 100 kilometers an hour. So something's got to give there. And unlike plastics, these metals don't bend back. Now, I'm just going to bend them back with some vice grips, I guess, and a hammer. Uh, but you can get 70, 75 aluminum tuning upgrade parts. Now, talking about like crashing it and upgrading it, let's have a look at the Uniscore, which yes, I still haven't found a better name for it. So for durability, I'm giving it a six out of 10. Why? Well, it's a really fast vehicle and there's a lot of kinetic energy there. And again, if you land it upside down, that wing is just an anchor and it will bend your arms or your towers, if you want to call it towers. Um, the serviceability, pretty good though. Parts are in stock on the Corelli website. It's 24 hour shipping for me here in Belgium. So the serviceability, really good. The design is pretty easy to service as well. The upgrade ability, Team Corelli has some upgrade parts available, but it's nowhere near what you can get for like a Traxxas Slash, for example. So I gave it a six for upgrade ability. The cool factor, well, People showed up and watched me drive this buggy, so um, I guess it's pretty cool, right? 
Handling, I gave it an 8 because it's the best handling RC I've had yet, especially in this sort of class. So 8 for handling, a 10 for speed because I think this is the fastest ready to run buggy you can possibly buy. Correct me if I'm wrong, please do that in the comments below, but I think 110 out of the box is about as fast as RC cars get. Uh, for a bash score, I gave it a 7 because it's a very versatile vehicle and I only gave it an 8 for racing because it's not a race vehicle really, it's a bit too heavy to really be a race vehicle. Um, but I think with the correct upgrades, you can probably do well in like your local club racing. A crawl score of 2 because it's a buggy, a realism score of 2 because it's a buggy, and that gives us a total score of 64 points, which is the highest score so far <laughs> when it comes to the Uniscore. Um, but that was it for me today. I'm going to uh, finish off with some nice little driving footage. But I just want to thank all of you for watching, especially if you made it this long. Maybe consider subscribing for more videos like this. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one, probably with more RC stuff. I really want to finish my modified slash video, but I keep breaking that car. So yeah, we'll see when that video goes live for now. Massive thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.